We're going to install the cross-platform for Azure PowerShell, which replaces PowerShell RM, and it allows us to use the same commands on Linux, Macintosh, and Windows in a cross-platform. So for instance, I can type in, say, a Linux shell command using this cross-platform PowerShell on a Windows computer, and I can type PowerShell commands, say, on a Macintosh. So it is cross-platform between these different operating systems. And it also works on various different processors as well, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, all the links I'm going to go to today are going to be in uh, the comment section, so you can go ahead and check that out. When you first open up PowerShell, you're going to notice this Try the New Cross-Platform PowerShell. Now, this one says PS Core 6, but we're actually already on a later version than that. It just shows that in the link uh, a slightly older version. Well, anyway, when you open up that link, we see that it takes us to some basic directions. So I'm going to get you through all that a little bit more quickly. One of the links that you'll need if you're not using Windows 10, if you're using an older version of Windows 7 or 8, is going to be the Universal C Runtime. If you're using Windows 10, you can skip this. But if you're on 7 or 8 or 8.1, you'll need to install it. The next thing we'll need to do is to go to GitHub to download our release. So when you see the release, right now it says version 7 preview 5. By the time you see this, it'll probably be a later release than that. Um, then it gives you some information about the release. But when you're ready to download it, you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Now, it's really easy to get the wrong kind of file here. So let me explain the different files. You First off, you see PowerShell. You see the version, the preview, all that kind of thing. After that, you're going to see Linux. Then you're going to see... Uh, ARM processor, for instance, Alpine processor, et cetera, et cetera. Then you see OS X. Then we see Windows. Now, make sure you don't accidentally get the ARM processor for using a traditional Intel-type processor. Make sure you scroll down to this area. Now, you have also the option for a zip file, an MSIX, and an MSI file. Make sure that you either choose the MSI or the zip file. The MSIX is going to come from the Windows Store. And although it's a trusted location, the problem is that a lot of times it just doesn't work. So I'm going to choose the MSI file. It's uh, going to work in the most amount of cases. So I've already got an Intel type of processor, and I've got um, x64 operating system running Windows 10. So let's go into our download section, and we see that it's downloading. And it's not very large, so it should only take a few minutes. It's about 50 megabytes. And now it's done. I can double click on it. And if you did choose the wrong one, it's not going to hurt anything. It'll just stop and say it's not going to work. So don't worry about accidentally downloading the wrong thing. So I'll just run through the wizard. Now we have a few options to choose from. By default, we see add PowerShell to path environment variable is in there. We want to have that. Register the Windows event logging manifest. We want to make sure that we get the logging working. I like to also enable, enable PowerShell remoting so we can have other computers remote into this computer or we can remote into other computers if we do it on both sides. Then we have the add open here context menu from Explorer, uh, which I'll have to show you as an example and install. It goes fairly quickly since it is a small installation and it's going to show up in our start menu. And now it's finished. Now I can click the launch PowerShell but I want to show you where it is in the start menu. So I'm just going to click finish and we'll go down to start and we see the PowerShell preview. And I'll make the font a little bigger. Everything here looks pretty much the same, except the box is going to be black instead of blue, although we can certainly go in and make changes to the colors if we want. So we know we're in the right version because at the top it says PowerShell 7 Preview 5, whereas the other PowerShell doesn't say that. So I'll just close that one. Now I did promise uh, I'd take a look at the Explorer piece for you. And I've just opened up my, the uh, Documents folder. And if you right-click on a folder, you see this new option that wasn't there before, PowerShell 7 Preview. You can say Open Here or Open Here as Administrator. And uh, it basically opens to that particular folder. So it can save you a little bit of time if that's the location that you want to go. The next thing we'll do is type install-module-az. And that's going to install the Azure module 
for the cross-platform. It says it's coming from an untrusted repository, but I'm just going to choose yes to all. And we'll continue. And we see the package is installing and should just take a few minutes. Now we need to type in login dash AZ account. And we get a warning that we need to go to a web browser, put in this information, log in to our Azure account, and then we can come back. And we need to use the code that you see here. Now your code, of course, is going to differ, but this is what I am given right now. And you'll get a new code every time that you do this. I've gone to the website. It's prompting me for the code. I'll paste that in. Click Next. And now it's going to want my Azure login. I'll go ahead and do that and go on to the next step. It says that I have successfully logged in. Now we need to go back to the PowerShell application. And we're back in PowerShell. I hit Enter. And there we go. I'm now logged in on the cross-platform for Azure on this new core version. I'll just run a get command and hit the tab key, and it'll give me some various different uh, get commands that I can go through. Let's try get-scheduledTask. And we see we've got a lot of scheduled tasks going on in the Azure account. Now, at this point, you can use your bash commands as well as your PowerShell commands. And it doesn't matter if you're on Windows, you're on Linux, you're on Macintosh. Uh, some of these things you're going to need to be a programmer to do, and I'm more of an infrastructure person, so I can get you started and get you uh, logged in. But beyond that, it's going to be up to you to uh, be able to type your commands in and do whatever work you need to have done. So there's all different kinds of commands. You can go to TechNet and look up so you can see what you can do on your Azure account once you're logged in. So that's how we install the PowerShell core version as well as the cross-platform for Azure PowerShell.